Dzień dobry. Szanowni Państwo, witam serdecznie na konferencji poświęconej wynikom wypracowanym przez spółki Grupy Azoty w 2020 roku. Dzisiejszymi prelegentami będą pan Tomasz Kryniewicz, wiceprezes zarządu Grupy Azoty SA oraz pan i prezes zarządu Grupy Azoty Puławy oraz pan Mariusz Kondziołka, wiceprezes zarządu Grupy Azoty Policy. Pana prezesa proszę o rozpoczęcie konferencji. Net profit in 2020 came in at 355 down year on year. However, we should stress that it has been or it was a record-breaking year in terms of revenue. I'm speaking about 2019. Due to the pandemic crisis, 2020 turned out to be better than expected and recorded a lower uh, performance year on year. However, it was still in line with our expectations. I will discuss it in more detail um, later on during the presentation. I'd like to first of all present the management board of the capital group. Starting with Mr. Tomasz Fins, President of the Management Board, Mr. Witold Szczepiński, Vice President of the Management Board, as well as Director General of Grupa Azoty SA based in Tarnów, Mr. Mariusz Grab, Vice President of the Management Board, Mr. Filip Grzegorczyk, Vice President of the Management Board, who joined us on the 15th of December last year, Mr. Grzegorz Kondziewski, Vice President of the Management Board, and a member of the management board, Mr. Admar Artur Kopec, and myself speaking to you, Tomasz Kroniewicz, Vice President of the Management Board, uh, as well as President of the Management Board of, of, of GA Puave. Major events and developments of 2020 includes, first of all, or include, first of all, the facts and the overall comment that we have finalized at the beginning of this year, last year's negotiations with the Małopolska region's authorities on the agreement to cooperate closely to advance air and climate protection goals. And our undertaking was to reach climate neutrality in our production units as well as our activities conducted in the Małopolska region. This will include a far ranging work in order to protect the climate, as well as mm, creating a wider potential for renewable energy sources, which will be mapped as, a, as well as a network of eco, uh, eco advisors on climate issues, as well as the activities taken to promote and improve uh, energy efficiency of our units. We will strive to achieve the climate neutrality and also circular energy targets at the same time trying and striving to improve uh, the efficiency of our production units. For instance, in terms of granulation unit at Puave for ammonium nitrate. In order to meet the expectations of our shareholders and stakeholders as well, we have introduced uh, advanced production processes and advanced products classified uh, in line with or classified uh, a part of the so-called green chemistry, the direction which we are pursuing. We have also intensified our activities in order to deliver goals in line with the European Green Deal objectives, including the Phosphorm production line, which are modern and environmentally friendly NPK fertilizers, which provide, which provide nutrients in a rational way and efficient at the same time. This, as I said, is in line with the 
requirements of the European Green Deal. And we also revamped our presentation of our products and also across the group, we have revamped our approach to sales of fertilizers. The Fosfarm line is a line of compound fertilizers which will be manufactured in line with the rules of both circular economy and also sustainable development. They're enriched with calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, and also macronutrients such as copper and zinc. And calcium, magnesium, and micronutrients come entirely from regenerative sources. We have also cooperated with, uh, sorry, cooperation with Gdańskie Zakłady Nawozów Fosforowych, Fosfory, which was rebranded into Grupa Azoty Fosfory. The same applies to a company in Hozu. Therefore, we will be maximizing the benefits of the strong brand and the brand potential of Grupa Azoty. In order to meet the NE, C directive to reduce ammonia emissions into the atmosphere, we have introduced a new product, Fulrea plus N NI, or NI, NIU. This is urea containing an inhibitor in order to meet the requirements laid down in the directive to reduce ammonia emissions into the atmosphere and the necessity to implement that directive into the Polish legislation. which is also in line with the European Green Deal and compliant with its requirements and targets. Those products will allow us to reduce our emissions into the atmosphere and the application of urea containing an inhibitor, as we have mentioned previously, will be a requirement in Poland as of August 1st, 2021. But this product has already has already been offered at Grupa Azote for several months now. This is a result of our R&D cooperation between the CBR and Atarnov and also our subsidiary Grupa Azote Hozhov, together obviously with the key companies of the group at Pozulavy and Police as and customers of this product. Some of a part of this technology was taken over from Compel Expert, our subsidiary, which is yet another example of intra-group synergies. Other major developments in 2020. Rupazoti supports farmers in soil testing using scanners, soil scanners, agrocares. Using those scanners, we can perform quick soil analysis for farmers all around Poland and then some positive experience with this technology, all group representatives working with farmers across the country will be equipped with such soil scanners as of this year. Thanks to those scanners, the resulting soil analysis reports will be available and sent over to the farmer's telephone within just minutes after the test. And therefore, the farmer will receive precise recommendations regarding mineral requirements for each part of the farmer's land. As a result, the farmer can immediately take action in order to appropriately yeah, apply appropriately to the selected group of the group fertilizers with a specific nutrients. This agrotechnical tool in together with, uh, with uh, specific software will they be able to control the fertilization of their crops and obviously this will result in better quality of crops and also for better crop protection. This is also a response to the requirements of the European Green Deal, which will call for a revamping of uh, the economies in terms of agriculture into more pro-ecological economy. Grupa Azote also started the commission and pre-commissioning of the facility for the production of ammonium nitrate-based granulated fertilizers. And the capacity of the two new lines is approximately 2,600 tons per day, which is 
820,000 stores per, per year. This is the total capacity. This will meet the requirement from large agricultural farms, you know, agricultural producers. The budget was at 400, 340 million PLM and the production line for ammonium nitrate based granulated fertilizers and uh, for ammonium nitrate and calcium ammonium nitrate will have the production capacities of uh, 1200 tons and 1400 tons respectively. Applying granulated fertilizers will will improve the efficiency, especially for large area farms, which translates directly into the carbon footprint. This type of pro products is also preferred by our foreign cons consumers and customers. And also the demand for such fertilizers is expected to grow continually in Poland as well. Grupa Azoty continuously and actively has partners, still partners with the Łukasiewicz network. And we are proud to say that we have joined the Łukasiewicz index, which aims to promote listed companies engaging and devoted to R&D activities. And the index includes listed companies of the Warsaw Stock Exchange of the, of the both the regulated and alternative market, New Connect market, which cooperate with the Łukasiewicz R&D network. The list was announced in April 12th this year, but the index quotations have been published every day. And one of the requirements to join the index was to cooperate with the network as of 1st April 2019 uh, up to the 31st of January 2021. And we have met that condition because we have cooperated and we have partnered with the Ukrashevich network since its very inception. The next slide presents and discusses the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our measures have been commented or our performance have been commented for months because the pandemic period has been the period of a special mobilization of our activities. We were fast decision makers to take care of the health and safety of our employees and our stakeholders. As a socially responsible company, we want to be a major support for local communities as well. We have donated as a group in general in 2020, more than 4 million, 4.2 million PLN, which was donated to the institutions and, the, and to measures fighting the pandemic. Obviously, in close partnership and cooperation with the Ministry of Health and also the Ministry of State Assets, which coordinates those efforts. And uh, I'd like to extend my gratitude to this very great uh, this this good cooperation is very fruitful cooperation and the approach of the minister of both ministries uh, thanks to which we were able to reach uh, all those in need in terms of the fight with the pandemic like the hospital like hospitals and other medical centers uh, these were both monetary and in-kind donations including specialist medical equipment and medicines and also the supply of or the transport of the patients to hospitals as well as the supplies. Grupas of the group companies are also actively employing the available technologies in order to produce uh, those products which will minimize the risk of a spread of an infection. We have also rented or made available uh, vehicles uh, to transport both samples and also the medical personals personal. We have also made available containers in order to take samples. So there's, uh, there's been a lot of measures that we have taken in order to proactively combat 
the persistent COVID-19 pandemic. Moving on to our ESG measures and activities. These are concrete figures, including the highlights. For instance, a 10% reduction of the requirement and the demand for energy generation fuels. Grupa Azote took a number of actions in order to improve our production processes and energy efficiency. And thanks to that, we have reported a major decline in the consumption of energy generation fuels. For instance, by updating and improving our production processes, replacing our current units uh, and facilities with more uh, energy-friendly and energy-efficient ones, which translates directly in the reduction of also CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Grupa Azote takes great care of, in order to meet all the legal requirements and norms in terms of emissions, and we are doing our best continuously to adapt our installations and facilities to those standards, taking great care as well in order to meet all the norms of atmosphere protection against emissions. We have also saw, we have also seen other positive impacts on the environment in terms of the emissions of nitrous oxides going down 20% year on year, as well as CO2 going down more than 17% versus 2019, as well as a 5% reduction of overall waste volumes. The same applies to PM 2.5 emissions. Go, moving on to polymer project, a historical investment in terms of, for both Azote and Grupa Azote and the Polish economy. Hyundai, our general contractor, reported at the turn of February and March that the project came at its halfway point, that is, reached a 50% stage of com completion. This is great news for us. We are halfway through and we are talking about all the processes, including procurement, engineering, construction, transport, as well as the deliveries and supply of apparatus and equipment. And we have successively and consistently received those deliveries at the construction site, starting including reactors to produce polypropylene. As I said, in general, all these activities came at a halfway point, a 50% stage of completion already. In terms of major milestones of the Polymeric Polita project on January the 7th, we had a formal handover of the construction site to the general contractor Polymeric Polita. On September 29, 2020, we, have received, we received the last 2020 building permits. This is a major scale of the project. This, this proves the major scale of that project only by looking at uh, the number of the building permits we needed to receive. On October 9th, uh, 2020, we had to sign, in, due to the pandemic, we had to sign execution. We had to sign the amendment to the EPC contract, providing, among other things, for a Euro 30.2 million increase in the contractor's fee and also a three month extension of the time scale of the project. However, uh, as a rule, the value of the project, the entire amount of the project should be in line with, with, with our expectations and the budget. On May the 31st, 2020, we executed an investment agreement between Grupa Azote SA, Grupa Azote Zakłady Chemiczne Policja SA, Grupa Azote Azote Poly Elephants, Grupa Lotus SA, Hyundai Engineering, as well as KIND and a consortium and a syndicated or a syndicate of banks. Uh, on the slide, you will see uh, the amount of uh, the term loans and other facilities. Uh, the syndicate includes a number of banks, and these are also listed on the slide. 
On November 16, 2020, the district or regional court, the district court, um, signed or recorded the increase of our capital. And as a result, Grupa Azoty Police, the shareholding structure is as follows. Grupa Azoty um, has, Police has 34.4% uh, of our shares, of the shares. Grupa Azoty holds 30%. And Lotus and Heads in Kind hold 70%, around 70% both. The next slide, the next couple of slides, presents a couple of pictures uh, showing the progress of the Polymeric Policy Project works. Moving on to the next part of the presentation green chemistry. We have selected a number of projects, flagship projects. For instance, the blue hydrogen product project at Polita. Because nitrogen, uh, hydrogen will be a side product uh, of the production of propylene. Therefore, we'll be able to reduce our CO2 emissions from the ammonia unit uh, installations and also use the byproduct. Therefore, we'll be able to, to direct the stream of hydrogen from PDH to ammonia at Polica. The blue hydrogen is based on conventional energy sources. However, it reduces the emissions in terms of CO2 emissions through the use of hydrogen from and directed, redirected from other processes and also uh, reduction of gas usage. As a result, we will be able to reduce our emissions and also utilize byproducts. The H2 product, which is dedicated to the automotive industry, is another flagship project as part of this project. In the laboratory of Kenjezh, at Kenjezhin, we are developing alternative fuels and also analytical methods in order to analyze dedicated hydrogen for the automotive business. This project is in progress as well. Humic acids, uh, in the, this project involves the development of technologies for the production of humid substances, improving the quality and productivity of soil. And in 2021, we plan to launch uh, those products, humic acids uh, uh, in the market in order to increase the efficiency of the selected fertilizers produced by Grupa Azote. The pilot production plant will be launched in the second quarter of 2021. Ureasin nitrification inhibitor projects, project carried out by Grupa Azote Hoju, which is our subsidiary, in line with the NEC NEC directive as of August 2021 will be uh, there's there will be a ban on the use of urea of uh, of this particular uh, chemical substance. So we'll be ready uh, in to meet those requirements within the time scale provided. The phosphorus and potassium fertilizers based on biomass. This project includes the use of biomass derived raw materials in our fertilizers and thereby using byproducts containing phosphorus and potassium and this project will be launched in 2021 as well or we will also have micronutrients and fertilizers and other projects another project which will involve the use of micronutrients such as copper and phosphorus, no, copper, zinc and boron, and the use of waste-derived material materials, uh, thereby extending our fertilizer portfolio and uh, expanding our footprint on new market. Those additives will be 
also used in forest areas and uh, they will be based on waste and waste derived there will be waste derived products obviously plastics recycling is another project based on oleomides and Grupa Azote as a company that introduces polyamide into the production of of packaging will be able to part, partially meet the requirement for the plastic for plastic recycling as i said partially the project awaits the investment decision which i believe will take place shortly uh, in a couple of days to come biodegradable plastics the goal of the project is to develop the technology of biodegradable plastics at Hojo. We have had a number of successful trials and the launch is expected to take place in 2021 as well. The carbon footprint, the, the, the next, the carbon footprint production is the next project and also the last but not, last but not least, we have another project, waste to fuel process based on polyurethanes and coal sludge to produce energy generation fuels in order, in order to manage our waste and consistently reduce CO2 emissions, uh, which is our major goal and overriding goal in every single process across the group. This project is awaiting. This project is in, in progress. Sequestration is another project which will provide which will enable us to introduce CO2 stream from the ammonia plant to the depleted natural gas deposits under a pilot project from our ammonia plant. The depleted natural gas deposits are located in Police. The timeline for this project is three to two, four years to come. Right now, the deposits are being analyzed and examined in order to assess the feasibility of introduction of CO2 stream to the depleted natural gas deposits. We expect that this project will allow us to reduce CO2 emissions in the production of ammonia by about 60%. Catalysts uh, is, another, is, is another project and there's more, obviously, which I could discuss. Uh, but now I'd like to move on to our consolidated financial results and the facts and, and the facts and figures in terms of our finances. Um, 2020 was the pandemic year, and this situation put a lot of challenges ahead of us. However, I believe that Grupa Azote, as a group, managed to reach solid, very solid consolidated results. All major group companies have reported positive results. This is a proof that our measures taken in, in the context of the pandemic allowed us to meet those challenges, those challenges of this new unprecedented situation. And in our opinion, in the opinion of the management board, the measures that we have taken, the regular measures that we have taken will minimize the impact, the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which could put a threat uh, to the continuity of our operation, to the to the group as of the group remaining a functioning and going concern. As you can see, the as you can see uh, on this slide, our results were quite solid, and especially in terms of net profit, both for the parent company and also whoever Polizia and Compo expert was higher in comparison with 2019. The same applies to quarter four of 2020. As you can see, our major companies closed the last quarter of the year with solid and positive results. And the end of the year was a period that brought a lot of concerns to us because the scale of the pandemic went up again uh, after a slowdown uh, a quarter before. However, it turned out that quarter four was pretty solid for us and we have managed to 
uh, show a net profit, as you can see uh, in the last column, for every major company across the group. Our products are sold around the world. The major market, obviously, uh, is, is obviously Europe for logistics reasons. Mm, around 50% of our sales is um, located in Poland and, and followed by European Union countries and other European countries. Thanks to the acquisition of, Grupa, of the Compa Group and also um, the synergies uh, upon comp uh, on consolidation, we are also present around the world in other, con uh, in other continents. In, in, in summary, we sold 50% of our products, uh, agro products in Poland, 50% in general. However, in plastics, the majority of our sales came from other European, other countries, foreign countries. This slide presents our standing versus the competitors. As I said, the revival of the first fourth quarter of 2020 allowed us to increase our consolidated revenue by 4% 4, 4 versus the previous quarter. Combined with the support that we received in terms of both compensation and also remedial measures, it allowed us to increase our EBITDA by nearly 50% or 48% versus the previous year and the versus quarter four previous year. I will discuss it in more detail in the slides to come. I have received a lot of questions concerning this matter. Therefore, I will be um, answering your questions from yesterday and today. Uh, in the morning, uh, and I will try to receive uh, to answer them as I speak. Macroeconomic factors presented on the next slide. Polish economy rebounded quite nicely after a drop or a sharp decline in the economic activity due to the lockdown and the pandemic. According to the estimates of the European Commission, we will. The, our GDP in real terms went up due to higher exports and also due to uh, consumption from households and the economic balance and the trade balance. The last quarter of the year, unfortunately, was a major challenge as new infections went up sharply and limitation in economic activity had to be introduced again in order to contain the spread of the pandemic. This unfortunately muffled the economic activity, especially in certain businesses and sectors. As a result, fourth quarter of the year unfortunately showed a drop in GDP. Inflation in Poland in 2020 went up sharply or noticeably, especially due to higher prices of services and food. There was also a certain role played by the increase in administration fees, for instance, for the removal of waste, household waste and industrial waste, and also prices of energy. Moving on to the effect and impact of the pandemic on the chemical industry by segments. The COVID-19 pandemic had no significant impact on our assumptions in terms of the production and um, contract-based sales in the agro segment, which turned out to be the most resilient segment for uh, in the very difficult period of the pandemic. Obviously, we had certain impacts due to, for instance, closing of the borders. Uh, this is, was a major or 
this was a challenge for us in terms of our logistics. However, those restrictions and limitations were pretty local and the same applied to quarter four, not only to the entire tw year 2020. On the other hand, the prices of major crops went up by around 16 to 20 percent year on year. The production of plastics, on the other hand, is directly connected to electro and automotive segments. And these were the segments that were mostly affected by the pandemic with a number of plants closed down. The restrictions introduced in 2020 resulted in a reduction both of both demand for and prices of caprolactam and polyamide. In March 2020, we had first news that uh, production units can be, could be closed down across all uh, the entire um, value chain for plastic production. A major drop year on year was reported in the second quarter, obviously, after the traditional slowdown uh, in the summer months, we saw a rebound and revival in, in economic activity. The situation in the plastics business went up or improved. And the last month, months of 2020 brought a continuing revival and increase in demand. Therefore, we are cautiously optimistic looking at 2021 and the quarters to come. Our situation in the plastics business, unfortunately, continues to be affected by the general difficult economic situation all around the world and the countries which are main markets. Uh, this will depend on our continuing measures to contain the spread of the infectious disease, COVID-19. But as I said, we remain to be cautiously optimistic in this area. Melamine produced at Boave uh, in the early stages of the pandemic, we saw a, a drop in uh, demand. And obviously, this had an effect on prices as well. But at the same time, global producers were seen to also reduce the supply, especially in China and in Southern Europe. However, we saw an improvement in May already. And as far as 2021 is concerned, we are hoping to see the, an increase in melamine prices driven by high demand. And this will also translate into the expected rebound in margins as well after the very difficult year 2020. For oxo alcohols, we can say that in April 2020, there was a reduction of the prices due to the downward trend for propylene and also lower demand due to the pandemic and this, its impact on the economy. We also, there, was, there were also logistic problems related to the timeline, timeliness of the supplies of the European market, especially from Asia. After the summer shutdowns for overhauls, the demand started to go up gradually. And the market improvement of the market situation supports a positive outlook for 2020 as a whole. However, titanium white was uh, a segment that was impacted. Mr. Konjoka will probably discuss it in more detail. At the very beginning of the pandemic, there was a slump, no marked slump, but um, the second part of the year and second half of the year saw a rebound and uh, even a very high demand as for this time of the year, higher than expected. So all in all, throughout the year and the scale of the entire year, titanium white was not impacted as much as expected at the beginning of that difficult year. But the factor, but the 
impact of the fundamental factors was increased or deteriorated by the fact that we had a pandemic, especially in terms of uh, the requirement for energy and also the prices, as well as CO2 emission allowances and oversupply of gas. On the other hand, translated into historically lowest prices of gas, of gas even below the breaking point in terms of its profitability. Unfortunately, uh, the third quarter saw other effects such as the lower demand for electricity. And in the fourth quarter of the year, we saw increased demand. As a result, quarter to quarter, prices went up. Due to the recorded declines in revenue, both the parent uh, of Grupa Azote and also uh, other group companies, we decided to take steps and take advantage of the financial support mechanisms under the Act on Special Measures to Prevent COVID-19, that is the Anti-Crisis Shield, 4-0, especially at the turn of the third and the fourth quarter of the year. There, in order to save jobs uh, across the group, we decided to avail ourselves of the financial support. As a result, the support received stood at PLN 45 million in total, most of which we received in the third quarter and the rest in quarter four. The next slide presents our revenue across the group. Revenue went down by 7%. However, the figure is still solid. The performance and both the revenue figure is still solid, especially in comparison with the record-breaking year of 2019. On the one hand, um, this was due to higher sales volumes in agro-fertilizers and also higher prices of specialty fertilizers, combined with a weaker demand from the markets where our chemical and plastics products are sold, which I mentioned before. The revenue generated, the net profit generated in the uh, last quarter was in line with our expectations and throughout the year as well and therefore we believe that it is a solid figure in the very difficult challenging year of the pandemic. Our consolidated revenue went up year on year and the net profit stood at in the fourth quarter and the net profit stood at 90 2 million in comparison with a loss reported a year before in the last quarter of 2019. Our consolidated EBITDA stood at 1 million, 1, 1 1.3 billion PLM, and the EBITDA margin was uh, in keeping with uh, the record breaking uh, margin of, of 2019, which uh, we are very proud of. The beta margin stood at 12% in the fourth quarter, going up year on year. As you can see on the slide, the major drivers of our EBITDA level was the stability uh, in the agro-fertilizer segment. As I already mentioned, this is the segment that fared best in the pandemic period. There was also a strong, but there was, on the other hand, a strong impact of the pandemic on the plastic segment. Other drivers included the low price of natural gas and obviously anti-crisis shield as well as compensations for the increase of electricity prices. We'll discuss it more in more detail in the, in the slides to come. EBITDA bridge versus 2019, the major 
negative impact was due to um, the low prices we and also the cost of CO2. However, it was offset by a change in volumes, a reduction in costs, and also the compensation and uh, financial support received under the anti crisis shield. EBITDA was impacted more by those factors in terms of higher prices of these stocks. However, Lower prices of other feedstocks had a positive impact on our EBITDA, especially in terms of benzene and phenol, propylene, and the major negative price was due to the prices of energy and coal. In the fourth quarter, there was a positive impact of changes in volumes versus first quarter of 2019 and obviously compensation received also under the anti-crisis shield. Negative drivers of our EBITDA was due to the decrease in natural gas prices and lower feedstock prices and also lower prices of main products had a positive effect on the data in fourth quarter, on fourth quarter of the year. Other operational activities was the is uh, are the write downs re reported in Hozhov and Sharkov. Your questions concerned a number of the questions concerned the details on the compensation that we, are, we have received. Therefore, we are showing this slide, which presents our compensation received and recognized in 2020, broken down into individual companies. The parent company, Grupa Azoty, Uave and Kendrzyn, and Polica, received a decision from the Energy Regulatory Office to award compensation for 2020 for energy under the compensation scheme for energy intensive sectors and subsectors. And as a result, we recognize those amounts at 85 million in other revenue, other operating revenue, and also reduction of energy use costs. You will see the exact amounts of compensations received. In total, we received 130 30 million PLM. As a result, we reported 218 million. By segment, you will see that the compensation was received mainly by agro fertilizer segment, 65%, chemicals, 25%, and plastics at 20 or 10%. In third, in the fourth quarter of the year, the compensation was recognized as follows: 10 million. For Grupa Azote SA, Grupa Azote Puave, 37 million plus, Olice, 6 million, ZAC, Grupa Azote ZAC, 13 million. All in all, we received 7 million for the fourth quarter. This was a multi-aspect, a multi-stage process. Uh, we need to analyze our economic indicators and also technical parameters, that is the consumption of energy uh, in uh, individual areas, the prices of energy, and also the assumptions in terms of how we can, how, which amounts, what amounts we can compensate for. We have estimated those amounts in our financial statements preliminarily, and then it was verified and reviewed 
by the auditor, PDO, also in the context of our assumptions for the year and those amounts have been reviewed and verified. We, we presented those amounts in our preliminary amounts and also the estimated performance. I'd like to thank our auditors for this hard work and a very smooth cooperation in that area. We applied for compensation within the prescribed time limit and we are waiting for awaiting the decision by the Energy Regulatory Office by September, by the third quarter of 2021. All our liabilities under credit facilities and loans are met on a timely basis and there is no threat that we will exceed those time limits. We have umbrella credit facilities combined with real cash pooling, both in Euro and in PLN, and also a multi-purpose facility, which is managed by the parent company, depending on the demand for funds across the group. So we are moving and transferring those limits depending on what is needed across the entire group. We also have three limits in multi-purpose facilities and also other types of facilities. Our financial standing is solid. There are no major threats or risks that this standing will be will deteriorate uh, in the future. We are meeting the covenants under our loan agreements and facil credit facility agreements in order to meet any higher demand. Our net debt at the end of 2020 stood at 2.6 billion PLN and net debt to EBITDA was at 2.1 billion PLN in 2020. Moving on to our investments and in CapEx projects. Group Azopi will continue and continues to Long, the investments we started in previous years. Our main CapEx projects include, obviously, polymedical project we have discussed before, whose share in that structure accounts for about or more than 50%. Obviously, the construction of a energy unit at Boave and the construction of new units for the production of nitric acid and um, granulated fertilizers. I will discuss it in more detail when we discuss uh, the situation at Puave and also the new energy project uh, at Kanjezhen. We are also delivering our mandatory capex. And the capex for 2021 is planned at 3.7 billion PLN mainly based on advanced stage, stage um, of work at Polymere Polite. We have not only continuing our very ambitious projects, but we're also planning new CapEx projects as we are well able to finance new projects as well with our long-term uh, credit facilities and credit lines. And therefore, a risk that we will not deliver the planned investments is very low. And pro-environmental investments are reviewed across the group um, in terms of the feasibility of acquisition of preferential non-bank credit or sources of funds, such as the European Union funds or the national support programs. The planned capex for 2021 also includes uh, the spending on the, on the Polymeric Polizia project in line with the timeline of that project. You also asked about uh, the, the details of uh, our capex for 2021. 1.8 million for the Polymeric Polizia project and for other uh, 
companies as well, around 200 million and other companies, group companies. And the structure of feedstock costs is presented on the next slide. That structure remains the same versus the previous year. As you well were aware, gas is the main feedstock representing 20, more than 20% of the consumption of feedstocks across the group, followed by energy, coal, potassium salt, potassium chloride, phosphate rock and propylene, and other, which includes feedstocks accounting for less than 2%, such as dolomites, rock, imanite, or titanium slag, up to packaging. We are also showing a detailed breakdown for each company on that, that slide. As far as gas is concerned, total gas consumption in 2020 was at 23.2 terawatt hours, most of which was consumed was delivered from uh, again again and obviously most of it was consumed by Grupa Azoty Puławy at 10.8 terawatt hour the gas consumption in 2020 went up across the group as our facilities for instance in Polica went back to normal in terms of um, production we saw the lowest historically lowest um, prices of gas, especially in Germany. And also the lowest average annual price. Going down by one third versus 2019. The record high Stocks were of gas, obviously, due to warm winter and the lockdown period. It was also reported in 2020. Especially in view of the fact that uh, supplies from Russia through Ukraine could be put on hold. As a result, we met our targets by 55%. 54%, which put a lot of pressure. And also we saw a lower demand for LNG, which translated into higher supply of energy of uh, LNG to Europe. The competition between LNG and pipeline supplies drove down prices below the level of variable costs, even for Russia and for deliveries in from Russia. Obviously, the production was reduced, especially from the USA, more than, by more than a half, especially uh, in the beginning of the year. Remaining low in Europe in the fourth quarter. Moving on to CO2 prices. As you probably know, we saw a lot of dynamics in emission allowance prices, which is shown on the chart. However, Grupa Azote is taking measures on an ongoing basis to lower on the reduce the impact of those variable prices on our performance through ongoing monitoring of the market and also by purchasing our emission allowances on other markets. Good or favorable market condition permitting in order to balance the risks of those prices on our performance. As 
especially in terms of term purchases for future reporting periods. The next slide, slide presents energy commodities and electricity prices and coal prices. And the current rise in the prices of fuels and also new emissions. The electricity prices is going, are going to the level reported in 2018. And the contracts we have secured will secure the required volumes in terms of uh, electricity. We are awaiting for the national regu regulations on the level of reliefs. For the charges incurred as of the 1st of January 2021. As for hard coal prices, 2020 saw rising prices and we are expecting to, for those prices to remain at the last quoted level. There is a surplus in, on, on the Polish market, both in, on the part of the producers and also uh, customers. We have long-term contracts securing the required volumes of hard coal, and they will also guarantee continuing or continuous deliveries as needed across the group. Moving on to individual segments. You can see a pie chart showing the percent percentages. Our major business is the agro-fertilizers business, which is obviously no surprise with uh, the share in revenue uh, uh, in 2020 at more than 46%. And the acquisition of compo fertilizers reinforced our presence in that segment um, with a 15% share. Plastics went down by two percentage points versus 2019, which we believe that uh, it is still a um, slight drop in the very difficult pandemic year. The revenue in the fertilizer segment in 2020 stood at 6.3 billion versus 6.7 billion a year before with a beta margin at 12.9% versus a slightly higher margin a year before at 14.4%. Those results show that uh, the pandemic did not have a major negative effect neither for volumes or for revenue going up year on year and the stable demand made us focus more on local lockdowns and the logistics of our deliveries and despite an increase in the price sale and the prices of gas year on year was also a major driver however overall we were able to remain very profitable in terms of our business. One exception is the specialist uh, fertilizers at Compact Expert. Moving on to the chemical segment. Pigments played a major role with a bit of margin at, in the fourth quarter, at around 50% versus 10% a year before in the fourth quarter of 2019. Oxo alcohols went up year on year and also quarter on quarter by 17, uh, 17 million versus a loss reported in the fourth quarter of 2019, mainly due to 
higher decline of polypropylene of propylene versus other you know, products, driving up our performance uh, to 9% of EBITDA margin. Across the year, pigments show 50 million in EBITDA with high EBITDA margin at around 14 versus uh, around 12 last year. As a result, in general, the chemical segment fare well year on year. However, in terms of sulfur, we saw an impact going down by 14 million. But still, there is a progress versus uh, the previous year. And melamine with a bit down. Uh, at minus 60 million. In oxo alcohols, we saw major drops in the prices of oil and nafta, especially in the second quarter of the year, and a lower demand for petrochemical feedstocks due to limitations and restrictions uh, across the world affected the demand. The only area with a relatively high demand was the production of uh, food packaging and also health protection products. With demand starting to rise after the summer period and as the injections of the vaccines um, programs started demand started to rebound and also it was followed by higher demand across all the uh, across the oxo alcohols segment as well we will continue probably to see higher demand for plasticizers and the quotations and prices are expected to stabilize this year combined with higher demand obviously much will depend as you know on the situation in terms of the spread of the pandemic and obviously the limitations introduced in individual countries, which could affect both the demand and in general the economy in those countries. Titanium white was also impacted by lower prices and consumption of gas and lower prices of other feedstocks combined with higher sales volumes going up by around 3% and the programs to contain the spread of the pandemic made a lot of people to stay to remain at home which allowed us to take overhauls and also paint our houses, which also drove the demand. In terms of demand, the demand for titanium white, the last part of the year proved to be a surprisingly good period for us. In terms of melamine, the contract prices of melamine in the European market went down by nearly 9% year on year due to lower demand in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic, we saw limited supply from major global producers, especially in, as I said, China and Southern Europe. Producers either stopped or reduced production in their installations and the customers would use and buy stocks. The interest in melamine in Europe went down by 35% in the first part of the year, first half of the year versus previous years. Those lower demands um, were taken advantage of by, for instance, Chinese producers. And they focused on overhauls in their major uh, production facilities. They also tackled the problem of logistics uh, supplies, for instance, containers. And this also had an impact on this particular segment. Analysts believe that 
2021 will see a rebound on margins and prices as well as demand. Contract prices went up this year compared to the end of 2020. They went up by 15%. In terms of plastics, there were signs of a slight rebound, especially benzene and phenol. They were translated into a positive EBITDA year on year at 1%. For EBITDA margins still, it was quite low and um, the impact was quite low, therefore we reported a solid um, a bit on the positive side at the end of 2020. The prices of our products went down by around 300, uh, 200 million, combined with the prices, the decline in prices, which was uh, lower, it translated into lower sales volumes going down by the power million GLN and therefore our EBITDA reported EBITDA was negative. Our main goal was to deliver um, supplies for the packaging business and also to adjust our supply to the demand in other sectors such as the slumpy automotive sector quick outlook for 2021 both for strategy and investments as you are aware, aware of we are working on the strategy to include which will include the trends or expected trends for the energy and the climate action green deal as well as um, meeting the humanities needs especially in terms of food in terms of investments, our investments in CapEx projects, as I said before, we are continuing our largest project, Polymer Police, already at the half point and in line with the time frame and the schedule, and also the CHP plant at Huave and a number of other projects which are progressing as planned. There is no major impact on those timelines and the schedules by the pandemic. Moving on to individual group companies. Grupa Azoty Puławy. Starting with Grupa Azoty Puławy, the consolidated revenue for 2020 stood at 3 billion, 206 million. And in the fourth quarter of 2020, they stood at 859 million, going up year on year by 2.5 million PLN, that is 0.3%. The consolidated net profit of the capital group stood at 215 million. And in the fourth quarter of 2020, it stood at 47 million PLN. In the reporting period, we saw a decline in the prices of most of our products, both for the entire year and the fourth quarter, especially for in terms of main fertilizers going down by 14, 13%, and going down by 9% quarter on quarter. And the same applies to melamine, melamine prices going down 16 and 8% respectively, and for caprolactam prices going down 20, unfortunately 20% and 11% respectively. Our consolidated EBITDA stood at 522 million PLM in the entire year and 134 million PLM in the fourth quarter, which was higher than in the fourth quarter of the record-breaking year of 2019. As obviously, this was due to low prices of gas and electricity going down by 20% year-on-year, and also electricity prices 
which went up was partly offset by compensation for energy intensive sectors, as I have mentioned before. And those compensations for 2020 were estimated at 73.3 million PLN for the entire year. Also, the financial support received under the anti-crisis shield of uh, 25.5 million PLN had a positive impact, as well as the reversal of the impairment loss of our, on our fixed assets. for the cost-generating unit of agro segment. As a result of the impairment test. The agro segment for 12 months of the year, a bit of agro segment went down year on year by around 96 million PLN which was mainly due to lower selling prices of our products. But as I said, agro segment was especially stable and was particularly stable and also resilient to the pandemic and its impact. Also due to or owing to a good situation in the agricultural business and also the fact that the European Commission maintained or upheld the anti-dumping measures. For feedstocks from Russia, therefore we saw higher sales volumes across all the portfolio of our agro products. Other products, such as melamine and red noxies, reported lower results. For melamine, I believe that uh, the impact of the lockdown of our economy was mostly visible in the beginning of the year. Some of our uh, customers needed to, had to stop the production in the second part of the year. In the second uh, half of the year, it went up again. However, the prices will remain low. In 2020, our revenue from melamine sales went down by around 20% year on year. By the same applies to revenue for Red Knox products, it's going down by 15%. Moving on to investments in CAPEX projects. As I said, no interruptions were experienced across the group. Our CapEx project the scale of our CapEx investments is at about 3 billion PLN for our ongoing projects. The capital expenditure in 2020s was a record-breaking PLN 824 million, mainly, which was mainly spent on the construction of uh, energy production unit and also the nitric acid production unit as well as new nitric acid production units and neutralization units for production of new fertilizers based on nitric acid. The same applies to the granulated fertilizers production unit based on ammonium nitrate, which I've already discussed at the beginning of the presentation. And the last investment shown on this slide, on the slide, we need to mention that in, Jan in July 2020, we started the commissioning, pre-commissioning of the first production line. As I said, it was attended by, by the Minister of State of Assets and Mr. Yatsik Sashin. We are planning to launch the sales of those products at the end of the year. We also launched uh, or commissioned um, the new um, steam boiler or HCP plant, which should improve the energy intensiveness of the plant and also reduce uh, the emissions of uh, nitrous oxides. All in all, 
at Puave, we saw we, we saw a major impact and major challenges, market challenges due to mainly the pandemic, which I have already discussed before. However, our flagship segment, fertilizer segment, shown major resistance. Of course, we um, saw lower melanin and copper lactam output, but we also received support, financial support received under the anti-crisis shoots in order not to release any employees, not in order to save jobs. Across the group, we also received additional compensation for energy intensive sectors. Other major events of the year included the fact that despite all those challenges, the company and the group was not indifferent to a sharp decline of, of infections due to coronavirus. As I said, we spent major amounts across the group to fight the pandemics the pandemic, more than 1 million, 115, 1.1 billion addressed to medical facilities and also to the production of feedstocks to produce disinfectants, which also drove down the infection rate. We also signed a deal with... Uh, the national agency to use the dry ice, our dry ice, to protect transported vaccines for COVID-19. We are talking about the temperature of minus 79 degrees Celsius, which is ensured by the dry, dry ice, which will produce a web. We also consistently continued our R&D activities, especially as regards the European Green Deal objectives. As I said, Grupa Azoty Hozhub, our subsidiary and part of Grupa Azoty Puave, intensified work on the new product that is urea with urease inhibitor as a response to the NEC directive, which makes us or requires us to use urea with inhibitor as of the 1st of um, August 2021. At the turn of the year, Grupa Azote Fosfori, our subsidiary, launched a new modern and environmentally friendly line of NPK fertilizers, Phosphorum. Yeah is the name and these are the fertilizers which are produced in line with circular economy requirements. Thank you very much for listening and now I will we'll give the floor over to Mr. Mariusz Konjoka, President of Management Board of Grupa Azotopolica and the Grupa Azotopolica Group. Thank you very much. A very warm welcome from me as well. 2020 at Grupa Azote Police is shown on the slides. Uh, and you will see that our performance and our margin in terms of uh, also a net profit were positive, despite the very difficult condition uh, caused by the pandemic and the limitations that it brought with. Both at the consolidated and separate level, we reported higher margins year on year higher performance. And the key was to maintain the continuing trade, logistics and production processes, taking into account the global pandemic and its impact. In 2020, we saw no limitations under, uh, of our operations due to the pandemic, both for the company and also across the group, nor any major impact on the key processes, even though our company also operates in foreign markets and 
imports a lot of products from or feedstocks from abroad. In terms of sales, we saw no major impact or major negative impact on in our sales uh, in terms of our main products and only a slight impact uh, locally and temporarily, which was not significant. There was also no major impact on our employment and headcount across the year. We took action to minimize the impact of the pandemic on our processes. Therefore, we did not use any anti-crisis shield support from the government, which is only a proof that, uh, which only, only proves our solid financial footing. The activities and measures taken by both the group and the company in this very difficult period was, uh, were focused on the flagship project of Polymere Polizia and also investment projects in the company, also closely tied to that flagship Polymere Polizia project. I'd like to mention again, this was emphasized before, but I'd like to stress it again that the key project, the flagship project, Polymere Polizia, is closed financial in terms of financial terms. And we reached a 50% stage of completion. That is the half point of the project. Our consolidated net profit in 2020 stood at 124 million PLN and the margin and the margin at 5% compared to 2% a year before. In 2020, we saw consolidated revenue at more than 2 billion, 428 million PLN. And throughout the period of the past three years, or two years, we see that this is a major solid position and uh, performance, mainly due to the measurement of derivatives. At 26 million. Financing financial operations of all at 36 million PLN. These were the main drivers. You will see the details in the company's financial statements for 2020. The structure of sales remains the same or more or less the same uh, throughout uh, the year and throughout a uh, lot of years with fertilizers at more than 80% and pigments at 20. The consolidated EBITDA stood at 88 million, going up by 90% year on year. As far as the company's separate EBITDA, it was also higher than a year before at around 15 million. Our performance in 2020 was positively impacted by lower prices of feedstocks, especially potassium, especially potassium chloride and gas, which was offset, negatively offset, by the consequences of a major decline in the selling prices of our product versus 2019, which was in line with general market trends. Our performance was also impacted by higher volumes of sales of nitrogen products, products, compensation for energy intensive sectors, and also reversals of a portion, portion of impairment losses recognized in the previous years at 13 million PLN. Segments. So our performance of the group by segment, we have two major segments, I mean fertilizers and pigments. In terms of fertilizers, the revenue in 2020 stood at nearly 2 billion PLN, which was slightly lower year on year. However, we saw a, an increase in the fourth quarter year on year, going up by 9% to close to 503 million PLN. Our EBITDA went down by 4% year on year. However, our EBITDA margin was stayed flat in compared to 2019. In the fourth quarter, we saw a margin going up by 1% year on year. 
a revenue for the fertilizer segment was impacted by two counter trends, namely lower of the average prices of key paid stocks, lower prices of gas and potassium chloride, and higher sales of nitrogen fertilizers. Our performance was affected by the average drop, the, the drop in average sales of our products due to the market situation, but it was also combined by higher sales of our nitrogen products and lower prices of our main feedstocks, which offset that negative trend. And as a result, we generated the margin in the fertilizer segment, despite this very difficult year and this very difficult macroeconomic condition, but it was similar to what we reported for the previous year. Pigment segment reported 360 million PLN in terms of the segment revenue, which was higher year on year, with a major increase reported in the fourth quarter of the year versus the fourth quarter of the previous year, going up by 36%, or 22 and 23 million. Our EBITDA stood at 72 million, going up by 20 million versus 2019. And our result, our performance in, in the pigment segment with, is solid and relatively high. The pigment's performance was also um, impacted by the reversal of impairment losses. However, if we eliminate the effect of uh, this reversal, which was uh, about 13 million, still our EBITDA and our EBITDA margin would be would remain still low, higher than in the previous year. In 2020, we saw lower sales volumes for titanium white versus 2019 by 2.8%. But this was obviously due to a quick rebound uh, of the Chinese economy after the pandemic. We saw in the second half of the year, we saw a major increase uh, in terms of demand for titanium white and starting from the fourth quarter of 2020 we saw a number of increases in prices also due to high costs of of transport by sea and the imports of titanium white from that market to europe uh, went down and we managed to increase our footprint on that market. We also saw a slight average decline in the prices of titanium white at 3.4%, still lower, but it was still lower than an, uh, a decline uh, in Europe, which stood at around 6%. All in all, we saw higher a bit of margin in pigments year on year, lower unit costs for the consumption of feedstocks, higher prices, and amounts of our sulfur sulfate products, and also the reversal of impairment losses, which had an impact on our pigments business. Our capex projects at Grupa Zotepolice, our Capital expenditures stood at more than 1.6 billion PLN, of which more than 1.4 billion PLN uh, for uh, growth projects uh, in relation to the Polymeric Polisa project. This is a major project, obviously, but as I said before, we need to remember that we have other ongoing projects in the pipeline. For instance, modernization and upgrade of our water treatment or pretreatment unit in this investment will allow us to double our production capacities other projects include our upgrade of our main transforming station at Polica to increase the amount of electricity which we can source from you know, the network on the grid which we will use to 
the polymeric Olisa project. We also have a new storage facility project and the construction of a Coolnox technical gray urea production facility in order to meet the future demand from our customers. This, this particular investment project is almost finished at 95% uh, of the stage of completion. 2020 also saw more and very intensive work to related to our flagship project, Polymeric Polita, which is a flagship project, not only for Polita, but also for an entire Grupa Azoty group. As I said, we have reached the 50% point of uh, completion. We are receiving apparatus and other equipment which are key to the construction of this project and also tanks, propylene tanks and propylene splitter, and propylene, propylene splitter, splitter, and also the pipelines, both over and underground pipelines, five silos, landing silos, and 30 storage silos for polypropylene. We will all in all have 60 silos to store our end product. At the port, at the Polizia port, where the future terminal will be located, we are finishing or finalizing um, assembly work for two storage tanks for propane and polyethylene. And also we are finishing the roofing for those tanks and silos and tanks. We are also deepening the water track which is also part of the Polymeric Policy project. The milestones and the progress of work makes us, make us optimistic in terms of our outlook for the future, but we're still continuously monitoring the situation. We want to be prepared for the wars, any scenarios. In 2020, we finalized uh, the process of financing for the Polymeric Policy project. On May the 30th, we signed major deals and agreements for investments from, with the consortium uh, syndicate of financing institutions. Grupa Lotos, Hyundai Engineering and Korean Kind joined the group of our contractors and our facility, credit facility agent, Ikaoisa, confirmed that our preconditions have been met or conditions precedent have been met and therefore the financing process uh, was completed. It wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't been so consistent in terms of our um, steps that we have taken to have taken through the issue of shares, which was earmarked for for this project. The key developments in 2020, as I said, included the following major developments related to our flagship polymeric policy project. You can see it for yourself on the slide, slide number 63. Grupa Azote Polita also joined the fight against COVID-19 and we spent 1 million zloty. Uh, for this cause, on this cause, at the beginning of, or since the beginning of the pandemic, we have also partnered with the University of Szczecin, and the agreement covers, among other things, joint research and development projects and implementation of doctorates and internships for students, together with Grupa Azotopoli Elephants and Grupa Azotopoli Service. We also signed an agreement with the Maritime University of Szczecin and all the parties declared their willingness to cooperate to create a course of study and to educate, educate engineering and technical staff and implement scientific and um, R&D projects. 
the ISB News Agency awarded uh, Grupa Zoty Policja in the category of the most reliable one in the fuel of the um, chemical sector the, for, for the successful implementation of the polymeric Policja project. We also received a certificate for a company promoting blood giving, a blood donoring, um, which was awarded by the Ministry of Health and the National Blood Center. And last but not least, uh, the Central Institute for Labor Protection, National Research Institute, awarded Grupa Zoty Policja with a gold card of Safe Work Leader in 2021-2022, recognizing our performance to improve labor safety and working conditions. To conclude, I'd like to thank, uh, on behalf of uh, the management board, which is Babdatsky, Novanas, and myself, I'd like to thank all employees across Grupa Azote Police Group for their involvement and dedication in increasing the value uh, of our group and, and enhancing its development. I would like to also thank the, uh, all the members of the supervisory board for their involvement and dedication. Thank you very much. I will now take this opportunity to answer a couple of questions. I have received some in the meantime. So, in a nutshell, I will read them out and try to answer them. Grupa Azoty Zak started the project uh, to 123 million worth of projects and into uh, in, in coal. This is a gas based project. This technology is a gas based technology and not coal technology. A question about Puave, why the upgrade project was extended to 2028, even though the budget is already at 50%. The, the project was supposed to be closed uh, um, until 2024, as far as I remember. We have extended that timeline for old acid production lines. And this project involves both an uh, upgrade of the old production lines and also the construction of new lines. And these parts of the projects are progressing as planned. After the modernization of upgrade of the first line, we uh, have received, we have uh, gathered experience and these are lessons learned for us, which we will use in the upgrades of new uh, more lines. But all other work related to the construction of new lines are progressing as planned and will be finalizing as planned by 2040, 2024. A question on Polica. Polica generated a bit uh, at 24 million in titanium white, which was the highest result for in a number of years. Do you believe that we, you will still increase that result in 2021? I believe that Mr. Konjoka described it um, in detail. There was a reversal of impairment losses, which had a positive effect of 13 million PLM, under, recognized under other operating revenue, but mathematically speaking, without the reversal, the situation uh, in the titanium white market makes us very optimistic and we can expect that this result will still increase in 2021 and especially uh, in taking into account high demand and also um, the fact that the price will still increase. Yes, we are expecting an improvement still. Uh, this is a traditional period that is the first and the second quarter of the year for titanium white sales and i believe that the demand for titanium white will or is or has been uh, at a very good solid level uh, since the beginning, beginning of the year what was your utilization of production capacities of quarter four of 2020 and uh, versus quarter one 2021 do you believe that this um, segment will be profitable I believe that we are seeing a rebound in the plastic segment in terms of the demand for our products and um, we are adjusting our production capacities and the utilization of our capacities 
um, to the demands and to the needs of the market. We cannot give you any specific data as of now, as of now, because um, there's a situation, we are still early in the year. We saw a major improve, improvements in prices and margins of oxoplasticizers. Do you believe that you will see record-breaking results for oxoplasticizers in the first quarter of, uh, on the fir first part of the year? The prices of our products on the spot market are growing dynamically, and this combined with the stable production output at congestion makes us optimistic uh, that we will see good um, performance in the first quarter of 2021. Thank you very much for all your questions and for participating in that event, uh, the conference. Uh, I gratitude to Mr. Konjoka for uh, his support. Uh, I wish you stay well in this very difficult period. Uh, I'd like to thank all the management board, uh, all, all the management members, uh, the supervisory board members, and members of all management boards across the group, and also all our employees. Stay well and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for me as well. Stay fine. Stay well. Goodbye.